Welcome everyone, my name is Dennis Cheatham and today I will be sharing my first in a series of tips and techniques for making rhinestone designs. Today I'm working in Adobe Illustrator CS4 on my Mac. Uh, the principles that we will be discussing today can be applied to most design software. The title of the video today is The Nudge Factor. Let's just grab a shape. Once you have a shape, if you use the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can move your shape in very small increments. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can use on your keyboard the arrow keys and the option or alt keys to make rhinestone designs. To understand this process, we first need to know how Adobe Illustrator calculates the nudge. Here we have two SS10 stones. These stones measure 3.4 millimeters wide with a half a millimeter gap. And you would use your number here if you're using a 3.5 or a 3.3 hole in your template material. How Adobe Illustrator calculates the nudge is from the edge of the original object to the edge of the same side of the copied object. So that would be a total of 3.9 millimeters. So whatever you're using instead of 3.4 you would just take your stone plus your gap and that would give you your nudge factor. So let's go back to our main design window grab an object using the arrow keys you can see our nudge increment is still very small. To change that we would go to Illustrator, Preferences, and General and change the keyboard increment. As you can see here it is set at 0.125 millimeters. We want to change that to what we just calculated to 3.9 millimeters and click OK. Now when we use our arrow keys you can see that our object is moving quite a farther distance. So now let's zoom in here and actually create a rhinestone shape. So with the ellipse tool selected if we click we can then change our ellipse to 3.4 millimeter. Again this would be what your setting would be. And there we have a little single rhinestone. Now using the arrow keys we can move that rhinestone in our increment of 3.9 millimeters in, in any direction. By holding down the option key it will then duplicate the rhinestone in the direction the arrow key that we press. So I'm going to hold down the option key and press the left arrow key. And we can continue doing that. Pressing the up arrow key left arrow key, up arrow key, right arrow key. Now if I don't hold the option key down I can move this rhinestone around at our specific increment. So I can move this rhinestone down here and it will be perfectly lined up. And then I can also hold down the option key and continue. So let's put this to practice. Over here I have Temple University's logo which I've already traced. So let's copy and paste that into our design. We want to make this about six inches wide for the shirt. So we'll just stretch it out here. And then I want to center that on my artboard so I'm going to click align to artboard and I'm going to center vertically and I'm going to center horizontally. We're going to use this as, as our reference so I'm going to change the, the color and then I'm going to make that color just a little bit muted and then I'm going to lock that. So lock selection.
come down here and we'll make a colored ellipse. Our ellipse remembers that we need 3.4 millimeters. And there we have it. One thing that I do is I change the transparency so that I can see through the rhinestone. And we'll show that why that's important here in a little while. Okay, so I'm going to move that to my reference object just in the corner. Zoom out a little bit. And then holding down my Option key and my down arrow, I'm just going to copy that rhinestone all the way to the bottom of our reference material. Then I can select that whole line and holding down the Option key again, use the right arrow and duplicate that across. Select those four using the right arrow key holding the option I can move that to our center line. Okay. So using one of our techniques holding down the option key and the right arrow and then releasing the option key I can move this stone over to our next reference shape and then once again holding the option key duplicating our rhinestone up. Now this ensures that those stones are lined up exactly where they need to be. Grabbing that whole row, duplicating it four times over, grabbing those four stones, duplicating them, grabbing those four stones and duplicating grabbing those four stones and duplicating grabbing that stone, making one copy, and then releasing the option key, moving that stone to our bottom reference shape, duplicating it three more times, grabbing those four stones, and moving it to the center line. Now if we zoom back out, you can see that our design is symmetrical. So we're going to group the stones, we're going to grab our reflection tool, make one click at the center of our artboard, holding the shift and the option key together, we can reflect our design and when you release it will drop copies on the other side. Now if we zoom in where our two designs intersect, you can see why I made the stones transparent. Is When I have two stones that are transparent over the top of each other, it multiplies and it shows me a darker color where they overlap. The other thing is, is that I can grab this set of stones holding the shift key I can drag it so they are exactly aligned and now you can see the different different colors so I know that I need to delete those four stones there and then because we were using our precise increments the four stones down here are perfectly aligned but again we have duplicate stones so they those four need to go away and there we have our completed Temple University logo. Okay, so I'm going to back up 
ungroup these stones. Let's select those. And I'm going to do this in real time to show you just how quick and easy it really is. So from our first stone, I'm going to hold the Option key and down arrow and finish the design. There we have it. I'm going to unlock our reference material, delete it, change our stone color to black with no outline, and we're ready to send to our cutting software. Okay, I want to show you one other little trick. We'll get rid of our Temple University and pull in and an E that I designed using the same technique, but here where the I don't like how those stones stick out as far. But if we take and nudge them, our increment it still doesn't look right. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to change our increment to half of 3.9 millimeters which is 1.95 millimeters now I'm going to delete this stone I'm going to grab these four stones and just use the up arrow and it's going to nudge it up so our spacing remains the same but now they're off center by half and I think that makes that letter look a little more elegant than before. We'll hit undo, show you the, the before, and then hit redo, show you the after. Once you do a half nudge, remember to go back in and change your increment if you're not done designing, because if you come in here, zoom in, and hold your option key and do a half nudge it's only going to move out halfway well that's the nudge factor using your arrows and option keys to make quick rhinestone designs um, this works well for square designs there's another technique that I'll be sharing in our next video on how to use the blending function to do letters that are not of a square nature. So thank you for watching. <music>